so data or types i got i have got its own role to play and whereas functions where we not we need to use some repetitive task and in that function you define some variables and those variables are private or completely preserved the values of those variables are completely preserved to that function okay and we define our own functions and we are just try to do many things uh, with respect to functions and data types so what we have learned from our initial previous chapters guys i'm audible yes sir okay so what we have learned from our previous modules were entirely different from this module this is a very important module where we are going to study python in terms of object oriented programming concepts okay so python as object oriented programming so it's a very important concepts so as in when we see python we try to understand python as an object oriented programming why because we have dealt most of the programs we have written each and every part of the program in terms of objects but without knowing we have just simply said a is equal to 2 and we have declared a variable called a with a value 2 so a was an variable an attribute and if you say type of a okay if you say type of a you would get a result as an it belongs to an class called integer so basically a was an object correct a was an object which was created which was an instance of a class called integer type so there we had so many classes okay and we have also created a is equal to some string a is equal to some float point value so there are so many uh, datas there are so many attributes okay which was been already dealt in terms of objects and i did not say like we are not specifying those variables as objects we used to simply call those things as variables statements expressions conditional loops and other aspects of python programming but now onwards we will be little bit specific about how this concepts of object oriented programming has been dealt in terms of oops okay so python already have some inbuilt standard features of object oriented programming okay the, the, there is a class inheritance mechanism which allows multiple base classes and also you can also have your own user defined classes that is what we are going to do in this particular module so we have very fairly uh, good syllabus this classes this this entire module is split into three major parts the first second and three you could see classes and objects we shall just try to define or try to understand between the relationship between the classes and objects very important you should understand first what do you mean by a class what do you mean by an object so what are the features of an object what because you are going to create it right because you are going to create this user defined classes and objects programmer defined types i am going to create my own type of classes and i am going to define an attributes so i am going to define Uh, so these are some examples rectangles instances so just don't worry much about these things right now rectangles and time pure functions all these are use cases here see i'm going to define a class called time so i'm going to use time as a class and define some pure functions modifiers i'm going to define a class called rectangles and i'm going to work on these rectangles rectangle is nothing but uh, uh, the it, it is a, a the geometrical shape which has got two sides in parallel and two two sides are equal in nature so i'm going to define it i'm going to just try to increase the width or height of the rectangle i am going to locate that like rectangle in some particular space so it is a general application but how you are going to define somebody is switching my slide one second somebody has taken control on my slide just uh, let me remove the controls 
don't be in the hurry i'll be switching the slides not to worry so just let me just try to so those were the examples of uh, uh, which slide is visible guys to you which slide is visible right now slide 2 sir slide number 2 okay fine yeah let me just preserve the control of this meeting to myself because uh, since there are no other presenters for today, let me preserve those controls myself. Okay, so now let me go to the slide. Yeah, good. And we are going to study the difference between classes and functions, classes and methods. And we shall study about some constructors like init, constructor, str method. So there are some couple of constructors or couple of methods which are used inside the classes, which are very helpful. I will be discussing about those things straight away in the next slide. So my next coming two, three, two to three slides and some examples. OK, so one or two use cases I'm going to discuss in this class. Please be very careful. Try to understand this concept. The first 20 minutes of this class would be very interesting and uh, much more informative because I'm, I've just combined all these concepts. OK, uh, init method, str method, class method, functions, objects, everything. The entire module has been compressed into two to three slides as an example. So the first thing is uh, uh, we, we need to introduce OOPS concept. The very important thing in OOPS concept are whatever programming that you do in Python, it is object oriented. What you mean by object? An object is nothing but anything which is measurable, which is tangible right which can be measured in terms of some features which can be understood in terms of some behaviors you call it as an object okay here as you can see uh, a person can be an object okay a person can be an object he can be measured with his height he can be uh, tangible he can be an, uh, he can be uh, varied with respect to fe features like name gender and age and also a person may have a different behaviors depending upon his task, depending upon his uh, what he can perform, what he can do some activity, perform some activity and so on. See guys, I'm talking about an object, whichever is tangible, you call it as an object, right? So now if a person can be recognized as a class, why? Because there might be a similarity between the objects, right? So I can group them as a class. Suppose uh, a class is just like an analogous to sixth B class. There we have a person belonging to a specific age group and a specific uh, students and male and female both. I agree, right? So class is a group of similar people performing some task, correct? So I can say group of similar objects because if I say person as an object, I can call those similar objects as a class. Any object which is similar to a particular type, you call it as a class. Okay. Any doubt here? So what is a object? Object is very similar to your person, which has got an very important categories or two features. That is one is an attributes. The second one is a behavior. Attributes are in terms of data, correct? So it's just like a feature of a person, like what is a height, what is a uh, a personality and what is a gender what is an age so all these things can be measured in terms of features i call it as an attributes and attributes are measured in terms of data right uh, five 5.5 5 feet and a complexion like white black uh, and a gender male female age uh, 
uh, varies from 22 to uh, sorry uh, 18 to 22 uh, in case of engineering class so and behavior behavior is nothing but a particular task which a person is performing here i'm, I'm just trying to understand this object in terms of two things one features of a person whether what is the name of a person what is the gender of a person and what is the age this is one person and what he does what he performs that is a behavior what is a behavior a person can talk and whether a person is eligible to vote so i'm just trying to say a person is eligible to vote if the age of a person is above 18 plus because i have an age as a parameter or a data here of a person so can i relate this data that is features with the behavior correct can i say this behavior as functions and the features as a data guys are you trying to understand yes. hello Yes sir. yes, sir. Okay, okay. Just uh, kindly respond because uh, there's a lot of information in, involved in one single slide. So now if I say person is an attribute here, standing here, and a person will have, uh, a person will have uh, a features in terms of attributes, right? And a person will have a behavior in terms of functions or methods. What he can perform, we call it as a function or a method. And the basic features of that object call it as an attributes in terms of data and values so this is completely an object correct this is one object now similar persons say similar persons group together i call it as a class okay and i'll go to the next slide so here there may be multiple objects correct so there may be a multiple objects, a person one with the name Sam, gender male and age 22. And he can talk and he can vote. I, I just want to know whether he can talk and whether he can vote later on. Right? We shall define it in terms of functions and methods. And I have an, another person called Mia. Hello, madam, I'm in the class. I'll call you back later. Okay. Yeah. So now I have uh, another person called uh, Mia and uh, the female gender with an age 16 and talk and vote. These are the functions. Whether she can vote or not, that we shall see, like that we shall decide later. So can I say this, these two objects belong to the same class? Guys, I have a small question here. Can I say these two functions belong to the same class called person? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Yes, so now, sir. What I will do, I will create a class. Now let me go to the next slide. Yeah. So what are classes and objects? See here in the previous modules, we had studied about functions. Functions basically organizes the code. And we have studied the built-in types. Like we have come across many different types of data. Int data, string, list, dictionary. Right, so there are different types of uh, strings and different types of string methods. str dot upper, str dot lower, str dot starts with. There are so many methods inside that particular class called string, which are grouped together. All those functions were grouped together to a particular class called string. So that was a function which organized the code, and those were the data types which were organizing the data. So now what is object oriented programming? So here I am going to define my own object, right? I'm, I'm going to define my own type. Understand guys, I'm going to define my own type which looks similar to already built in types. Just say, have I used print statement? Have, have I used um, uh, uh, a regular expression statement? So all those things are built in types which organizes the data, right? Here, I am going to define my own type. So if I'm trying to define my own type, it is going to organize code and data. So now just try to relate the code and data here in this case. What is data here? The data are with related to these attributes, right? Correct? Attributes like name, gender, age. And this is the input given by the user. 
here also name gender age this is the input given by the user this is the data i am going to organize the data where are the functions these are the functions whether a person can print or talk or or code so i am going to create a small function which will perform some particular task related to this person correct so now let me just try to open my jupiter class work so that we can try to understand and create our own class so you may interrupt me guys in between if you're not trying to follow follow up the concepts you may just try to interrupt me at any time okay i'll go to um, let me just try to share my class work notebook Is it visible, guys? My classwork, module three. No sir. Sorry, module four. No sir, not visible. No sir. is it visible guys just let me know when it is visible fast guys let, let me know when it is visible is it visible yes okay fine so now the first thing is we are going to create a class okay since i have discussed in my previous uh ppts i am going to create a class called person so in order to create a class called person i am going to use a keyword called class i am going to use a keyword called class correct space and a class name so this is my this is my this is my function how to define a class so this is how i'll define a class called person so it has to change its uh, text colors i don't know like why it is not getting changed just let me wait me wait for some time it's not at initiated <laughs> yeah so i have a class named person if i try to come out with an attributes so this class consists of a name age and uh, sorry name gender and age right it is just a, a comments or a document a text which tells me what does this class belong to and what are the attributes i can say i have an attributes attributes are also i call them as features right because in the slide you understood it as features so what are the attributes of this class name gender and age and also i had what did i had after attributes or feature and i can call this as data also right features in terms of data what else i had in my slide did i had something called um, a behavior correct guys respond otherwise i'll just 
switch off the class. Name is hinder and behavior, sir. Yeah, de define the behavior as well, right? So there was a behavior aspects also. So behavior can be in terms of functions, correct? Can be in terms of functions. Here I call it as methods. And what were those behavior? It was talk and the other one was vote. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So now just understand what will an object will have. An object will have both of these characters. One is attribute, the other one is behavior. So now the next is how to create inside a class. Now I will be using a method or a constructor. Why? Because I need to declare these attributes, right? I need to declare these attributes. So I will be using a constructor called init method. BF, this is how I use the constructor. I will create a function inside a class and you have a constructor called init okay init double underscore here understand this is double underscore init and this is double underscore again see this is double underscore two underscores init with a parameter self now i will tell you what do you mean by this self so this is a constructor which will be used in order to define the attributes which belong to the class called person correct now i will be using an input parameter called self why because this belong to the object itself or the class itself correct guys is it okay so now yes. inside this so what is this i am trying to define an attribute with respect using a constructor init with respect to init i will be dealing with this init in detail in the coming class don't worry i am just trying to relate this with an attributes so what was the attribute can i say name is equal to what was there in the first slide it was sam right name is equal to it was uh, let me make it cats it was sam and uh, what i had i had gender i had gender is equal to say he was a male and uh, say age is equal to age was declared and that was an integer value and the age was 22. Any problem guys understanding this attributes how to declare the attributes yes sir inside yes, sir. the class and now guys see here self and name if i want to relate this self and name right because this attribute belongs to this class so it should be called with its object name or with its self name so i'll be defining this as self dot name self dot gender and self dot age any doubt i'm i'll be using the dot notation to name the attribute attributes which belongs to the object or which belongs to the class itself is it okay? Yes, fast. Okay, any doubt? It is just like since this belongs to the name. See, this is nothing to do with the program. This is just for my reference. I have kept it. This is just a comment for my understanding what this class belongs to. What is the function of this class? What are the attributes and uh, for what purpose this class has been created? This is my thing. This, this I can do anything. I can type anything as a comment. Okay, and now this is the actual programming. This defines the attributes with the data. Correct. And now I have two methods. I need to declare two methods. How to define functions in here? Functions, I call it as a methods inside class. How to define a function? Then I'll just type it here. How to define a function? BEF. Can I define a function called DEF? And call this as a talk function, T A L K. Correct. Yes, sir. what it will do it takes an input argument it takes an input argument right it takes an input argument say name 
correct? And outside, I want to print the statement. I want to say print, print high, print high. I am, um, uh, I'll just write, write, write the name itself directly. How to run this function, guys? How to run this function? Can anybody tell how to assist me? How to run this function? Hello. Talk, talk, argument, sir. Can I say talk? Yes. And say. Uh, talk and the name, sir. Yeah. Yes. I can. I can call this function by its name, and straight away give the input parameters name, and this Monty will be an alias to this variable called name. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay, now I've just passed this as an input argument to this name and this has been delivered. And see, this is how I try to execute the function. Correct? Did I execute the function like this? And now, can I copy the same function here and put it inside this? If I'm trying to put this function inside the class, understand guys, this is a function, the same function which I've been considered and I've copied and pasted inside the class, this becomes method. Anything which with respect to the object, okay? With respect to the object. So this is object oriented because this talk is not a function now. And this name is not simply a name. It is what? It is self.name. Why? Because you're trying to address to the attribute of an object called self.name which was declared here. And I should say self dot name here also. Correct? Did you notice the changes with respect to a method? Now I started calling this as a method. Instead of function, I call this as method. Is it okay? Now this this is a function which belongs to the class called person. So it has become a method. A function which is in tie with a class, you call it as a method. So these are the different ways of expressing a method. Otherwise, it is a class. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, this is fine. This function I have defined with respect to this person. He was a male and he was a, at age 22. Now, I have to define a method called vote. Let me define it here only. So I'll define a method called vote. Let me have some kind of uh, discrimination between different functions. So here onwards, I have uh, uh, defined a behavior. This is for your understanding, guys. Uh, just don't take these things uh, uh, into the answer scripts. Okay. And here I have defined an attributes. Please understand this concept. Why? Because when you go to industry and when you're trying to uh, build a complex uh, problems or complex uh, programs, you have to split those complex programs into multiple cells or multiple small cells of user defined types. The program will be having a specific uh, purpose. They need to define a specific attributes. They need to cluster all those specific objects into a group of class. So that is why I call it as an object oriented programming. You try to define in terms of class inside class. You have so many attributes. You have so many methods, right? And you can have your own types. So this is what is required. Very important. So defined attributes, defined behavior. So one more behavior uh, I wanted to stress that is vote. I'll call this as vote. Now, what is that you require here? I'll call this as uh, uh, you can just say uh, rather than self dot name, you can just simply say self. And here I should use self dot name. So once you say self, this will be inside the same class. It will be referred to the self and it will look for self dot name attribute here. And that will be carried here. Okay. Now vote. I will be defining and vote. Again, I will say self because it is referred to a self attribute with, this, with respect to the same object. And I go to, I'll just put a condition here, guys. I will put a condition here. If self.age, correct? If self.age less than 18, 
what I need to do? What I need to do? Like allow that person to vote? No, sir. So I can say I am not eligible to vote. Correct? Else, else what could I say? Else what could I say? I am eligible to vote. That's else I could say I am just convert negate this statement. I am eligible to vote. Right. Is there any doubt here? Very simple. I have just defined a class called Sam Bill age 22 so these are some all the pre-existing data guys this is pre-existing data understand okay it's nothing to do with uh, the multiple i have not created a multiple person here now what i'll do i'll carefully try to understand this class how should i execute this class so i'll just try to run this program okay so i've uh, run this program let me introduce another uh, uh, cell here i'll just minimize this is it visible Yes, sir. Okay, fine. How to call this person now? I will be going, I am going to instantiate. I'll call an object. I'll create an object, say OBJ. So OBJ is a variable. OBJ is an object. OBJ is a object which belongs to a class called person. When it belongs to person, when I say person. Make sure it is case sensitive, capital P. And here, I will I have created a class. I have created an instance of a class. So this I could also say instance of class. Correct? Guys, yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay. So this is an instance of a class. So how to how to talk to the functions? How to talk to the functions or how to talk to the methods inside the class so how to address or how to print a particular or how to access a particular method i can say i can say <coughs> person see here person dot talk is Okay, let me just uh, make you people understand what is this object first. So uh, let me see what is this type of OBJ. Okay, type of OBJ. So can you see this type of OBJ? It belongs to the main class called person. Correct? Is it okay? And say print and see what is OBJ. You could see this belongs to the main co class called person and it is an object. OBJ is an object. And see what is person. And you see the person is a user defined class called main person. Very similar to one second. Very similar to if I define A is equal to 2. What is type of A? Is it an integer? Yes or no? So it belongs to the type called integer. Yes, sir. Or belongs to the class called integer. Very similar to that, I have created an instance. A was an instance here. I could say A was an instance of a class called integer. Since I did not say anything like we used to say A was a variable. Now it is A was an object there. Correct? A was an object with respect to an instance of a class integer. Now let us go back to our discussion. How to print? Okay, let I'll allow these things. I'll, I'll just add one more cell here. So is ob object created as a of person? Now how to get the method how to fetch the method i'm going to say person dot here go to 
class called person and use dot notation because it is in time with an object in time with an object go to talk see here person dot talk and pass an object and see what happens see here i have given an input parameters as an object now i say go to person use dot notation go to person use dot notation say person dot talk and say person dot quote and also i can say person dot quote here i can say person dot quote and pass the object as a parameter and you'll get the example and you'll get the result and also i can call in a very similar fashion since i already called an object here let me just introduce another cell here since i already called an object i can also say boss go to an object and go to a method called talk without passing any input parameter it would fetch the same result see here hi i am sam hi i am sam and here in this situation object itself is performing the operation guys object is responsible to print the statement hi i am sam okay here the class is responsible the input parameter is responsible and a method is responsible see here i have declared a class or input method is responsible to take an object and print hi i am sam so here what is responsible a method is responsible here what is responsible an object is responsible i just let me put it in comment objects are responsible to perform the task here the task was to print or to say whether he can vote or not right here i type here i should say since person dot talk this is method here methods are responsible responsible to let me copy the same perform the tasks or such as print or vote uh, similarly i can also say obj dot vote and no input arguments i could get the same result the results are same correct guys was that okay yes sir okay so now but uh, we were discussing about uh, two uh, objects right we had two objects there correct right? did we had two objects there yes sir yes or no yes sir was there were two objects one was male the another was female but uh, here i try to explain the concepts in terms of one particular object i mean to say like i have declared the person inside i have declared the person inside right with respect to his attributes can you see this let me copy this same program i'll go to the fresh cell and i'll just try to increase the width of your slide hope this is visible Correct. It visible, guys? Yes, sir. Okay, yes, fine. Sir. Now, instead, instead, if I want to create multiple objects with respect to the same class, I need to generalize few things here because I cannot say self dot name is equal to Sam. I cannot declare the name of the person inside the as an attribute. So what I am going to do. i am going to say self dot name is equal to an it is an user defined class sorry if if a user is trying to give some input i'll say self dot name is equal to n and i'll say self dot gender is equal to g and if i say self dot age is equal to k correct any doubt no right yes. now you are trying to call the object and its method outside this class 
so i should say la, uh, self comma n comma g comma a is it okay so self dot name refers to n here the first parameter of the user self dot gender refers to g the second parameter of the user and the self dot age referred to is equal to a refers to the a which is the third parameter you should have, uh, have to understand these are the three parameters which will be given by the user if he is trying to create two different objects correct understand yes 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 there was a small there was a question somebody tried to speak no i just removed the name of sam and uh, male and 22 i just tried to generalize this because i need to give these values as an input right so i declared it outside here as n g and a and this will be expected by the user when he creates the object these three parameters will be given by the user yes or no yes sir okay now I'll, I'll i'll just try to minimize this slide and i'll run this program so now what is that you're you're expecting can i say obj is equal to let's carefully understand obj is equal to person as a class where i'm trying to address person of what I need to do now? What I need to do? What I need to do? I need to pass the input arguments, right? I need to say name, name, comma. Uh, I need to say gender. So that is male. User is giving it as an input, right? Comma, 22. 22 was an age. See, user should know. What are the attributes of that particular class? Okay, what are the attributes of that class? And now say run. See here. Now OBJ is equal to person with these attributes. So now Sam is an alias to the object attribute inside in it. That is N. Male is alias to the object attribute in, in it with respect to J and 22 is the object attribute with respect to a in in it now if i say obj dot vote and see what happens so i am eligible to vote clear correct if i say this as a person one the person is trying to verify boss sam is male and whether he's eligible to vote or not also, I can say print statement here. I can also use print statement obj1 dot uh, talk, right? I can say obj dot talk. These are, you should understand, guys, these are some behaviors. This, this depends on task. Okay, you can also say task. Both are same, different tasks in terms of method. And these are declared in terms of methods inside the class these are defined as methods inside the class if it is not belong to the class it should be a function okay now if you run this program you'll get two print state one is print statement with respect to hi i am sam and i am eligible to vote now if i want to create a person the second person i can say obj2 is equal to person now the person is entering a different name called Mia and uh, and uh, she was a female and and her age was 16 okay now say obj2 dot talk and obj2 dot vote sorry obj2 dot vote and now you run the program so he says uh, it says hi i am mia and i am not eligible to vote and again this is a behavior so i had the slide which 
was given to the left side of your slide it was a person male with some behavior with some attributes and the person two which was the right side of your slide which was a female and the behavior with the same attribute see here guys i have the same attribute values here but instances are two can i create another instance guys obj3 is equal to can i create another instance can you just uh, say yes or no yes sir okay i am going to create another instance uh, so how many instances you can create how many instances can you create three sir huh three instances how many instances you can create i'm asking you the question Three. What do you mean by an instance? N behavior. Huh? Behavior. N right? N number. N number of instances. Correct. You can have n number of instances, guys. What What is this? i am telling you object here i have created an object object is nothing but an instance where were you all this time this was an instance this was an instance i am asking you how many such several such instances can be created after this program so there can be an n number of instances is there is there any restriction for me to create these instances i can have obj4 i can have obj5 object5 object6 object7 n number of instances can be created don't get confused with attributes i had only three attributes i had only two behaviors of a class of a person but i can have different persons right see there is a class of 40 uh, 45 students so but each class each person i am going to measure three attributes one is whether uh, name of the person gender and age and also i can i am going to measure how many subjects and what is the performance like i can have different types of methods can i create can i add one more person to that class with the same attribute can i add 41st person to that class I measure the same attributes and measure the behavior add him to that class because it belongs to the same cluster right it's a similarity of the data okay if you are not understood let me take another example if i try to create a class called car okay i will create a class called car so what is there what should be the parameters in the car can 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 anybody say car may have an attributes whether depending upon the fuel type right first preference is given to fuel type whether you are going to opt for a petrol or a diesel then you are going to do what price then uh, before price brand or a company right brand or a company then next what car uh like uh, what type of car okay then the price then color so all these things are attribute guys all these things are attribute and then the behavior sometimes uh what is the behavior you are going to create a method you are going to create a behaviors in terms of models right i'll have a method called like i may have a method called performance i may have a method called uh, something else right a uh, performance or a mileage or a maintenance something like this so this may be a behavior so this is attribute and this is behavior the first thing is i am going to use init method init method to declare the attributes declare the attributes like self so what is there what should be there first the first parameter might matter should be the self parameter comma followed by f that is fuel followed by brand that is b followed by price that is p followed by color colon and all these parameters will be assigned s e l f dot fuel is equal to f likewise s e l f dot 
brand is equal to b self dot price is equal to p self dot color okay color is equal to is equal to c is there any problem now is, is there any problem now huh? no sir. okay fine now let me just take only one behavior that is performance now what i will do since you mentioned behavior as performance i'll de define another df performance as a method and i will use the parameters of self which was given by user and i say okay if if self dot fuel if self dot fuel mentioned by user okay self dot fuel is mentioned by user is equal to petrol okay so no print user will purchase the car it is just my preference i'm giving user will purchase user is intended to purchase the car because he is looking for a petrol car then later we shall see i can create my own methods guys don't worry about this perform because i have taken only performance you can try to define your complex structure of programming in such a way that okay, okay person has given uh, a content called fuel brand and price and color so whether this price this particular brand satisfies all the constraint then the user is interested so you can give the feedback to the user you can create n number of complex way or complex structure of proof in order to uh, arranging your data and arranging your methods so else i say if a user enters diesel anything other than this so i say print not interested okay so this is the sheet which you have given to the this is the program and you have created some front end and in the back end this is going to run so now what i will do i'll ask i'll uh, suppose one person say in your class okay what is this invalid syntax here what happened to this self underscore fuel oh sorry this should be okay what should be uh, self dot age it was fine what happened to this fuel was a uh, different invalid syntax uh. Sir, sir, I think it should be is equal to is equal to. Ah, correct. This is an uh, operator. Right? This is a relational operator. So now, uh, say in your class, uh, some students say uh, person one is going to check uh, equal to. Okay, he will first try to refer to the car class called car and then he says obg1 uh, car and he, remember guys he has to give all the four input values because that is how the sheet will be created correct so he will give the inputs say something like this i'll give first one is petrol and the next is i'll give some brand uh, xyz and then say i'll give the price uh, say 20 okay and then say color with some uh, black okay so now i created an object if you run this program there will be no problem i want to verify dot performance of okay so now say user will purchase see here the user is intended to purchase so this is one person can another person give the same input but with respect to diesel or with respect to some other brands guys brand say abc and check with the performance because since this is dominated and it always says user will perform and you change the method here and definitely the method will be changed according to the user preferences here correct yes or no you are running late yes sir okay so now you can can i have a different types of parameters or attributes here 
can i have a n number of objects instances can be created can i have n number of behaviors which can be combined here so am i combining data as well as data as well as functions or codes do i combining these two things in class please fast Yes, sir. To have a relationship between this INIT and the method, I want to create a relationship between this attributes along with the methods. So I'll be using this as a constructor to create the relationship between the class methods and the attributes. So this is all about today's session. So just uh, make sure you watch this video multiple times to understand what you mean by class, what you mean by otherwise things will. Be properly it's of no use that you learn python make sure you learn your actual python classes will start from today and you need to be more serious make sure you learn these concepts very straight and clear no more confusions okay yeah thank you guys thank you for attending this session and uh, we shall uh, continue with uh, the actual syllabus in my next class okay this is just a preamble to my functions classes methods objects and some uh, constructors okay. thank you take care thank you sir